My name is Jeff H. Seip, and I have over 10 years of recruiting experience, including five years at Google. In this video, we are going to cover how much time do I take to answer an interview question? This question comes up time and time again when I'm interacting with people. And if you go on Google search, no matter how many different ways you type it in, the results actually stop on the first page. If you type it into YouTube, there are actually zero results for this specific video. And so what I really want to cover today is I want to cover it from a behavioral perspective, open-ended perspective, commonly asked question perspective. We're really going to chop down and say, per the type of question, this is about the recommended amount of time you should take and we'll chop down a little bit more. And I just want to cover some basic items to kick it off and get started. If you like my content, please like. If you have any comments, please comment below. And if you like my overall content, please subscribe. So item one, there is no right answer. And so all the answers that provide you with an exact time um, they're just recommendations, and that's really what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be going through that same exercise, but I just want to dive in and get a little bit more specific. And almost every answer I could find said keep it at two and a half minutes or less, with my favorite answer coming from Monster.com. After you've been speaking for 90 seconds without interruption, the interviewer is barely listening to you at all. And that's just not the case if you're presenting a really dynamic story and you're creating a good back and forth. Item two is time yourself. So I want you to think about this in two different components. Uh, they're both very simplistic. One, I want you to time the overall answer to your question that you've prepared. Then secondly, I want you to break it into sections. So for example, for a behavioral answer, you would break it into the six sections using the Starlf method and kind of just identify, hey, am I taking too much time in this section, not enough time in another section, etc. Item three, let's dive in. Commonly asked questions. So the recommended period of time that you would spend on a commonly asked question, one minute. And commonly asked questions could be something like, tell me about yourself or what are your strengths? Why do you want to work here? The real goal of these questions is to highlight maybe two to three key concepts and you should be able to identify those concepts in one minute or less. Also, for commonly asked questions, these answers are going to be pretty rehearsed. I don't want them to sound rehearsed, but you can probably answer most commonly asked questions in one minute or less. Just be super concise. Item four, the big one, behavioral. So. These are typically questions that start with, tell me about a time when. And my recommendation is three to five minutes. And the number one reason why I recommend this amount of time is if you have a complex answer with a lot of moving pieces that's super dynamic, it's going to take a little bit of time. And just like you would watch a three to three and a half hour movie, you're going to listen to a longer example if you're telling a great story in your actions. So let's break it down. You want to restate and clarify. That's about 15 to 30 seconds. Now, if it's a very vague behavioral question, such as tell me about a difficult situation, you may want to clarify, hey, Jane, great question. Do you want me to provide an internal example with a colleague or an external example with a client or customer? The situation, 30 seconds or less. You can identify six, eight to 10 Great details in 30 seconds or less. Definitely time yourself on this one. This is an area where you really need to chop down actions. Think about a minute and a half to two and a half minutes. You want to have at least three actions. And with your action and your supporting action, that's likely going to take about 30 seconds, maybe a little bit less. When you think about breaking down the actions, typically the first action is some sort of research and data correlated with finding out research and data from stakeholders. The second action may be kind of testing and working through it. And then the third action may be completing it along with presenting it to leadership, your team, etc. But you should have at least three actions. If you don't, go back and explore your example. Make sure it's super dynamic and complex enough. Results, about 30 seconds to a minute. Think time, money, kudos, and leverage. And so if each one of those sections took about 15 seconds, you're at a minute, 
You want to spend up to a minute on results. It's a critical component of your answer. Learnings, highlight a learning or two for about 30 seconds, and then any follow-up questions. If you're spending three minutes, you probably need to ask a couple questions in a couple of areas that might need clarification. A lot of times that can be technical or process related. Three to five minutes may seem like a long time, but again, if you're telling a great story, your interviewer will stay engaged. Item five is open-ended. And specifically when I talk about open-ended questions, we're talking about vague questions, hypothetical questions, situational questions, or scenario-based interview questions. And these are questions typically where you're not providing an example, and my recommendation is five or more minutes. To truly explore one of these answers, it can't be done in less time. So let's go through it. Again, this restating phase, this is about 15 to 30 seconds if there's a tiny bit of back and forth. Follow-up and clarifying questions, probably one of the most critical parts of these questions. Of course, you're going to ask one to two questions and pause, and then you're going to go into that thought process, rhetorical question path. This should take at least a minute. If you're not taking a minute to question the question, you are not going to identify really opening the book and exploring multiple paths. Next, brainstorming and organizing. This is anywhere from 30 seconds to two minutes. And what I mean by this is you stop talking, you look down and you start writing on a pen and paper just to organize your thoughts. Two minutes seems like an incredibly long period of time. But if you write down and organize, your answer will actually be shorter. I can almost guarantee it. Then you present the high level. This is about one minute. So your high level overview could be like PM 101. So for instance, HBT double R triple S, historical data, budget, timeline, resources, risk, scope and scale, stakeholders, and shared vision. And you're just generically introducing these concepts. And then when you break into the next step, which is solving and answering, which is about one to two minutes, you are going to make it as relevant and role specific as possible and likely take three of those concepts from your initial breakdown. So you might take resources, risk, and stakeholders and identify those three pieces as it pertains to as much specificity and role-related knowledge as you can get into. And then lastly, more questions. These open-ended questions uh, definitely require some follow-up questions. That's about 30 seconds. Item six, estimation questions. These definitely are also considered open-ended questions and sometimes trick questions or brain teaser questions. Uh, these are typically questions that involve general estimates, marking, market sizing estimates, and then kind of revenue estimates. So how many cars are there in New York City? How many Google Homes will be sold in 2020? How much revenue does an individual Walmart store generate in a physical store in one day. So my recommendation on estimation questions is about five to five plus minutes. Again, you're restating 15 to 30 seconds. Clarifying questions, you'll definitely need to get into the specifics. For these types of questions, that's about one minute. Some assumptions, you're gonna throw some assumptions out there, that's about 30 seconds more likely to a minute, and that's gonna be about maybe the market, the product, the size, et cetera. So solving. This should take about one to two minutes if you use two simple steps. You're gonna do rounding and you are going to use a smaller sample set. So for a US question, you might wanna use Michigan. There's 10 million people in Michigan. You're gonna to wanna to sanity check your estimation answer. So when you have that answer, you're gonna take about 30 seconds to say, are there 10 million cars in New York City? Uh, or does that not make sense? Actually, there's there's only eight or nine million people in New York City, so about a third of them have cars. Maybe it should be more like three million, something to that extent. Then you're gonna spend the last minute talking about limitations and variables because there's gonna be some limitations based on the data you had and there's gonna be just some variables based on your answer that you may not have explored that you may think of at the end. So definitely about a minute on this section. And then of course, 30 seconds if you need to do follow-up questions. Item seven, case study, you are almost always made aware beforehand when you're gonna have one of these types of questions or the interviewer will introduce it as a case study question. The recommendation for time on these answers is about 20 to 30 minutes. 
you will follow this typical path of restating and then asking clarifying questions, but this should be super interactive and there really is no length of time, but typically it's definitely going to be 20 minutes plus and we don't need to break down every component of that because there's going to be a lot of back and forth there. So just ask a ton of great questions, show a ton of thought process. Item eight, trick and brain teaser questions. So I just really wanted to touch on this item because I wanted to make sure I was covering everything, but this is going to truly depend on the type of question. So let's talk through a few quick brain teaser questions. So like, why are manhole covers round? Hey, if you know the answer to that question, it's 30 seconds. Whereas you have a three gallon jug and a five gallon jug, how do you measure out exactly four gallons? Well, even if you've explored this before, it's probably going to take at least a minute to two to just kind of define it and chop through it. If you need to problem solve a little bit, probably up to two minutes. Then a more complex one like you're kidnapped, your kidnapper puts two bullets in a revolver, spins it, shoots the first bullet, and click, nothing happens, and the kidnapper asks you, hey, do you want me to spin it again? Or do you want me to just shoot you again? And essentially, you would have to come up with a mathematical formula for which was the better result. That's going to take maybe three minutes. And so again, it would really vary depending on the question. Those are a few that are kind of pretty common brain teaser questions that you'll see if you Google search them. So there really is no right answer, but I want you to explore questions in a more strategic way. So instead of just looking at them holistically, which I want you to do, I just want you to break them down into components. And when you break them down into components and then create your final answer, you can figure out maybe where you're spending a little bit too much time and where you're not spending enough time. And this comes with just a ton of preparation and practice. Good luck. I really hope this video helps. Thanks.